and everyone along to our service today. We welcome you in the Saviour's precious, precious name. And if you're listening on uh, online, we want to give you a welcome as well. And we pray that the Lord will come and meet with us uh, today. We're going to open our service by singing 518 in the hymn book. It's a lovely hymn. There's a work for Jesus ready at your hand. Tis the task the master just for you has planned. He is to do his bidding. Yield him service true. There's a work for Jesus none but you can do. 800, 518. We stand to sing and let us sing it out our very best. Amen. Let's all stand to sing, please. Let us all unite our hearts together in prayer. As we come to pray, we want to sympathize with some families that have been bereaved in the week that has just gone out into eternity. We want to sympathize with our brother, Mr. George Pollock. George lost his sister last week. And to George and Irene, Stephen, we want to assure them of our prayers. Irene, of course, lost her sister also last week. So they've had a double bereavement, so do please remember the family. And then her sister, Yvonne McClemens, his brother passed away this week as well. And to Yvonne and her family, we assure them of our prayers and sympathy at this time. So let's remember these families, please, in our prayers this morning. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for another Lord's Day that finds us in the house of God, the living to praise Thee. We thank Thee, Lord, 
for loving us with an everlasting love. We praise Thee that we come before Thee, the one who has not only died, but the one who has risen again, and the one who ever lives to make intercession for His people. O oh God, as we come before Thee today, we do remember these families that have been bereaved. We pray for them, and we ask the Lord that You would comfort their hearts. We think of the Pollock family, and we think of the McClemens family. We ask the Lord that You would comfort their souls. O oh God, we just thank Thee that we can cast all our burdens upon Thee. And Lord, You have promised to sustain us in our hour of need. Lord, once again, we're reminded of the brevity of life, but, O oh God, we thank Thee and praise Thee for the one who gives eternal life when we come and put our faith and trust in Him, even our blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless our meeting today. We thank Thee, Lord, for each one bowed in Your presence, for each one gathered in God's house this morning. We do pray, Lord, for a sense of Thy presence. We pray, Lord, as our sister, Miss Russell, comes to give a report of Lord, her visit to Kenya, we ask the Lord that you would bless her. And we do pray, Lord, for Pastor Andrew and Pastor Patrice. We thank thee for these two men. And we pray, Lord, as they speak to us today, that you would undertake for them. And Lord, bless the congregations back, Lord, in Kenya. Oh, God, remember the work in Kenya especially. We thank thee, Lord, for the spread of the gospel right across this world. And we just pray, Lord, in these days that Kenya might know a breath of revival. Lord, undertake for us now. We come before Thee. We just commit this service to Thee. And Lord, we pray that You'll come and be one of our number now. For us in Jesus' precious, precious name, we ask it. Amen. Now, I just want to make a few announcements a wee bit earlier this morning. Again, let me take this opportunity of welcoming each and every one to the meeting today. We see some visitors in. We give you a very warm welcome, and we pray that the Lord will meet with us around His precious, precious Word. Do remember the open air this afternoon at 3 p.m. in Stinton Park. If you can come along and join with us and stand with us, then that would be very much appreciated. But Please pray for that open air this afternoon. Tonight, the service at 6.30 p.m., I'll be here to preach in the gospel. Now, the Rainey family were supposed to be singing tonight, but unfortunately, uh, they're unable to come. One of the girls uh, took seriously ill uh, just over the weekend and had to be rushed to hospital. So do pray, please pray for Alex that the Lord would touch her and raise her to full health and strength again. But we're delighted to have our sister Joanna McCammon again with us tonight at very short notice. Let me say I want to thank Joanna for filling in this evening at the gospel service. So come back again, bring your friends, family with you under the sound of God's Word, and uh, we will be having our time of prayer at 6 p.m. If you can come that little bit earlier, please come and join with us. Prayer meeting on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, and I'll be here to take the prayer meeting this Tuesday evening. And we can, we'll be continuing our special seasons of prayer for our young people, our children, our grandchildren, the Sunday school children. And please come along on Tuesday night. If you haven't been yet, and certainly I believe the Lord has been with us over these past weeks, and we have enjoyed the presence of the Lord, and there's been a good spirit of prayer in those prayer meetings. So please come on Tuesday night and join with us. The Little Treasures will be on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., and then on Wednesday night at 7 p.m., note the time men, 7 p.m., the committee meeting, and then we'll be having a session meeting after that a committee meeting on Wednesday evening. Youth Fellowship on Friday night at 8 p.m. Young people do remember uh, your meeting. Then next Lord's Day, now over these next two Sunday mornings, uh, next week and the week following, the Sunday school will be meeting at 10 a.m. sharp. 10 a.m. sharp. And it's going to be meeting up in the church here for practices for Children's Day. So parents, please take note of that. The Bible classes will be at the normal time of a quarter past 10. The service is 11.30 and 6.30. And I'll be preaching God willing at both services next Lord's Day and our sister Nicola Wilson will be singing next Sunday evening 
in the, uh, the, gospel, the gospel meeting. Remember the Holiday Bible Club from the 8th to the 11th of August. We'll give more details near the time, but just put those dates in your diary, and our brother, Mr. Phil Horton, will be taking the Holiday Bible Club with the boys and girls uh, this, this year. Children's Day will be the last Sunday of this month, Sunday the 29th of May, and our brother, Mr. Robert McCollum, will be the guest children's speaker that day. So again, keep that date free in your diary. Just let me again, probably the last time I'll be announcing this, the catering list. I know quite a number of you have ladies have put your name in those lists. So they're very much appreciated. Thank you for, for, for all those who are willing to help for the preparation for the tea, for the general events in the church, but especially for uh, funeral services. And if you haven't put your name down yet and you intend to, please do that today uh, at either uh, the end of either services this morning and uh, this evening. Now, I think that's all the announcements. Uh, let me, first of all, welcome our sister, Miss Margaret Russell, no stranger to any of us. And as you all know by now, Margaret was out for Kenya for six weeks there. And she has come this morning to give a report. Let me also welcome the two pastors from Kenya today, Pastor Andrew and Pastor Patrice. I let Margaret formally introduce them, and she'll be able to tell you exactly where they're from uh, in Kenya. We're going to ask Margaret to come now, and she's going to, she's going to bring a report of her visit to Kenya. Well, it was my joy to return to Kenya in March and spend those six weeks there. Uh, it was lovely to meet the people again and have some small par uh, part in the work of God in that land. I thank you for your prayers for me, and it, uh, we don't take for granted journeying mercies, and we don't take for granted safety and all as we travel and health as well. So I do thank you for praying for me. And um, it was a busy time, actually, the months of March and April, because children were off school uh, for a long holiday, the longest probably maybe in recent times due to the issue of the COVID, but they were at home, and normally that is the time when churches do have lots of conferences and meetings for uh, young people as they're at home. So it was quite a busy time, but my purpose in going to Kenya was to uh, go out to uh, encourage the Sunday school work in the BCFC and also in GBC. And uh, it was also the time of the end of a Sunday school year, and normally the time of examination and praise giving, and it was the time to roll out another year in Sunday school work. So that was my purpose to go there. And uh, I spent uh, four weeks looking at Sunday school prizes in the house that I stayed in. I thank God for the help that I received, and we pr prepared over a thousand prizes for uh, Sunday schools, 25 Sunday schools in BCFC, and also the 12 Sunday schools that are now in the GBC. Um, so I, I was able also to hold a Sunday school teachers conferences or to be part of them. They were arranged by the Bible Christian Faith Church, so I had a conference there for two days. There were 40 uh, teachers or new teachers uh, who attended, and it was a time of blessing. Uh, then we came to the Glory Bible Church, that is GBC, uh, which you will hear more about this morning. And uh, we had the same conference there for two days. And we had, uh, I was one of the speakers, there were others at that conference. And so the Lord undertook and blessed us. They also had a youth uh, rally and the, a youth conference in the GBC. And I was able to speak on one morning at that. So in all, I thank God for the opportunity uh, to especially uh, to be there to encourage the Sunday School Ministry, and I do ask you to pray much uh, for it, because we have now, uh, as I say, rolled out another year 
Another year of lessons, new songs, new memory work, just as I heard this morning in the prayer meeting, you've had Sunday school examinations here, and so uh, we have started then a new year in the Sunday schools, and I do ask you to pray much for the teachers that are going out uh, every uh, Sunday morning to teach the boys and girls and uh, both in the BCFC and the GBC. They do need your uh, prayers. There are those who are in charge, particularly in the GBC. There are superintendents who look after those or oversee those uh, 12 Sunday schools, and also one person called Jared who coordinates the Sunday school. And also there is a pastor in the BCFC who coordinates and communicates even with me on those Sunday schools as well. So it is a privilege to be able to encourage the work amongst the children that is very near and dear to my heart. Now this morning, it is also a great privilege and my joy uh, to be able to welcome two friends and fellow laborers in the gospel from Kenya. And I do thank the Reverend Gray for this opportunity to introduce them. Now, I could say much about them, and I, they could also say much about me as well, but we're not going into those details. But I would just like to say that um, when I was at home on furlough, and even throughout my time in the land of Kenya, I always uh, was burdened to pray that the Lord would raise up others to take over on the work. And on furlough, I did encourage the people of God in this land to continue praying that God would raise up Kenyans who would take the responsibility and carry on the work because as missionaries, we know that we are not permanent. And I rejoice this morning that this is the answer to your prayers and to my prayers. And therefore, it is a particular privilege to have them in the pulpit this morning, something that I didn't think would happen, but it has happened. And I thank the mission board for that and for facilitating them to come over for this short time. Now, um, I would just like to say uh, we have Pastor Patrice Akali, and he has been working under the uh, Free Presbyterian Mission Society Africa for four years, and he is from Western Kenya. Um, people have said to me that these two men are quite different, and they certainly are. And there's lots of differences, but they're Kenyans, you're then united, because they belong to that great nation. But Patrice comes from the western part uh, of Kenya, and he has been working there uh, with the mission for uh, four years. He's a pastor in the Glory Bible Church in Kakamega. Now, Kakamega, you may recall, that is where Gillian Gillespie worked and where Kathy Walker finished her time in Kenya. So Pastor Patrice is there. He also assists the bookshop. And he's busy he's, uh, there in the work and out to the western part in Yaporo, uh, where um, also Gillian worked. He's married to Gladys and he has two uh, children. And he's assisting uh, Andrew as the secretary of the G uh, GBC, the Central Committee of the Glory Bible Church. So he's going to preach for us today, so we will hear the word from him and we welcome him sincerely. Uh, today. Our second guest is Pastor Andrew Chiptoe. Now, um, he comes, uh, I don't know how to describe it because you know they'll correct me <laughs> that I didn't tell the facts clearly, but not in the pulpit, hopefully, but maybe afterwards. But let's say he comes more uh, closer to Kapangurea, but not actu actually Kapangurea, but he's from that side of the country and I've known him for 16, 16 years. So we have come a long way uh, with Andrew, and I thank God for the time that I've known him. He came to the Bible College as a young student 16 years ago. That is the Bible College of the BCFC. I was his teacher, and then after that, he continued his studies online with Geneva Reform Seminary. And I was there, he, he lived beside me in the Bible College, and I tried to encourage him to persevere to the end, which he did, I'm glad to say he did. So he's now uh, in the Glory Bible Church, and he's uh, pastoring in Kitale. 
and uh, he's the secretary of the uh, Glory Bible Church Central Committee. He's married to Mercy and has two young boys and uh, he will come now and give you a report of the work. He can speak for himself and uh, but it's a joy, a real joy and privilege to have them here today. So Andrew, we will call you now to give your report. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to say, Uchambo, Uchambo. I hope you all know about that Swahili word, maybe some. I will ask my, my sister, Miss Russell, uh, to teach you a bit of uh, Kiswahili so that whenever we come uh, here, you will be able to respond. So I hope that would be right. Uh, first, I would like to bring greetings from Glory Bible Church, Kenya. Uh, on behalf of the committee, I bring their greetings to you. And also, I bring greetings from my family. As you have heard, Mercy, Jaden, and Timothy, so I bring to you uh, their greetings. You have heard much from my sister. Um, I knew her uh, 16 years ago, and I thank the Lord because of her. And the time that we were together, I was really encouraged. Uh, sometimes I had some issues here and there, maybe in studies, but I really thanked her because she, re she really encouraged, encouraged me and also especially in the teaching in the Bible school. I really enjoyed it and I was blessed. And I remember one time we were going for evangelism and he told me of evangelism. And it's, you know it's very hard when you are going out for evangelism with your evangelism teacher. So most of the time I could be nervous, but I thank her because she was really encouragement, encouragement uh, to me. And the time that we were together with Margaret, I really I was encouraged with the burden that she had in the work of the Sunday school. And when she was in BCFC, at one time we served in a committee and I was the chairman at that time. And when I joined the uh, Glory Bible Church in the year 2018, uh, we also did together. She was my colleague. We did the work of, of the Lord together. And I really say it was a blessing to the work of God in Kenya. And we really we are really encouraged because of the work of Miss Russell in, in Kenya. And I wanted to say sincerely thank you to the congregation here in Tandakri uh, because you sent Margaret to the land of Kenya. I say thanks to you all and also especially to the family also. I say thanks to you all because you gave Margaret that opportunity to come to the land of Kenya. And I can testify uh, to today when we were doing evangelist membership, membership interview back in Kenya, when we went through the interview and asked the people how they came to know Christ as their Savior, a dozen of them could point that they were saved in the Sunday school, and many of them could point that they were saved through the teachings of Margaret Russell. And we really thank the Lord because we have that uh, testimony and we really rejoice because of the fruits that uh, we see back in Kenya. Also the work in Kenya, in the work of GBC, it started in the year 2018. I remember that time when we joined, when we left the BCFC and we joined, the, we had no uh, registration at that time. And so uh, we were looking for a registration and we were seeking uh, whether we, our, our child can be registered whereby we will be directly involved. And we had a difficult time at that time. And we are thankful that uh, Pastor Patrice at, at one point, he did, he did uh, 
conduct our friend, a friend called Ibrahim Kiario, who is a pastor to us uh, today. And through Kiario, we are, we are at the Glory Bible Church. And we had some difficulties in the registration. And during that time, uh, Miss Russell really helped us. We were with her. And throughout that, uh, that period, the church, we did agree to have a membership. We had to have uh, uh, membership uh, forms. We did have to, we were to prepare the church document for Glory Bible Church, which, uh, which outlines the doctrine uh, together with the practice of the church. And through that period, we are thankful that Ms. Russell also was uh, with, with us. Since the inception of Glory Bible Church, we started with a church in Yaboro, and after that, we had a church in Pikeke, and the church grew. And as we speak today, we have five congregations which are meeting every Lord's Day to worship the Lord. We have a church in Tandana, a place called Tandana in Kapenguria, together with Pikeke, and a place called Shimala Tewa, together with the Kakameka, where Pastor Patrice is, uh, with uh, Nyapora. So we, we have five congregations, and among that congregation, we have a central church committee which oversees the whole work, the central church committee, whom we have Brother Benson, who is also a, a, the chairman, I'm the secretary, uh, together with my brother Patrice, together with uh, Reverend Patterson, you all know about Reverend Patterson and with the other men. So that's the committee which, offer, which looks over, over the, the churches. And recently, we did have membership uh, discipleship classes. And the discipleship classes that we had, most of our churches are finished. And currently, we, interviews have been made for membership and after the membership, we thank the Lord. Last year, we had the baptism in, in some of our churches. In Pikeke, we had the baptism uh, together with Shimala Tewa and uh, together with Tandana. And we have baptized uh, a few of them. And we had also the communion uh, service. And we really thank the Lord because of that uh, pro uh, progress that the church in Kenya is uh, going through. And in our churches also, we do have evangelism. We do encourage uh, our people, especially for us who are pastors, together with the men, to have evangelism. So we do have evangelism. We go outreach. We reach uh, many, many people as much as possible. Also, as an outreach, we do have a book stand in our markets. And it has been a special way that the Lord has given us to reach many souls. Also, we have uh, the, bo the bookshops, the shop in Kitale, and the shop in Kakameka, where Pastor Patrice is. And also, it's a point of reaching many, and it has been a blessing. And through all those ministries, we are able to give out tracts and give out tracts to many people as much as possible. Also, in our church, we do, we do reach. Uh, to, their, we, to their schools, the public schools and the private schools. And currently we have a school in Kitale, which I go and preach every Lord's Day and also uh, in the middle of the week. And also in Tandana we have a school where Pastor Emmanuel is going. And we do also reach the prison officers. And recently Brother Patrice has been reaching some of the security officers in that side of Kakameka. And we, we do uh, pray that the Lord may open more doors so that we may reach as, ma as many as possible. So that's where we are now and currently. Uh, recently, we thank the Lord because when Reverend Kiaria came to our church and he was accepted by the Glory Bible Church and the Mission Board, we did agree that for him to go to Nairobi and uh, think about starting the work of God in Nairobi in a place called Chucha. And we really thank the Lord. He's looking forward to starting Glory Bible Church in Nairobi. Uh, we do uh, pray that may the Lord uh, help him to start a work, a work there. 
Now, the, where we are heading, we are heading towards constitution of the churches. And this, the coming Sunday, we will be having constitution of the churches in Kenya, and three churches will be constituted, and there will be local, there will be local churches, and they will be able to elect their elders and give a call to the minister in their churches. So we are looking forward towards that. Nyaporo, together with the Shima Latewa and Tandana, will be constituted, and it will be encouragement to us to see our churches being constituted. And we have a prayer request from our church, and we could like you to, to remember us in prayer. We request for your prayers, and we really thank you all because of your continued prayers towards the land of Kenya. Uh, we really, when we, come, when we came here, we did, what, some people that we met, some of them we knew, knew our names, and we, we, we did not know them. And they told us that we were praying for you. And when we were here, we are really, really encouraged to see the burden that our, our brethren here have upon the work in Kenya. And they have been praying for us. And we do thank you all because of that. And as the Bible says, do not cease to pray. You have, you have been praying for us and we will bring more requests for you to pray for us. And the first thing that I could like you to pray for is con pray for the constitution of the churches. Pray that the work, that the work will be commenced in Chucha. Continue to pray for the Sunday school in Kakameka. Our brother started a work there of Sunday school. And he was given a, a classroom to use. But after a short time, they sent them out of the class and now they don't have a place to, to meet for the teaching of the Word of God because it has been a good avenue to reach to the people around there because the people around there, they are drunkards and many of them, they are still, they are not saved. And continue to pray for that Sunday school that the Lord will open a door that they may have a place to meet for their teachings. Also, recently, some, uh, some two years ago, we had a visitation in a place called the Lomut in Pokot. And we did go there. We, started a, uh, we did agree to start a church there. And after starting, uh, 15 people came. And after that, they went their way. And there was opposition in that area towards the work. But thankfully, their children come every Lord's Day to be taught the Word of God. And it's really encouragement that even if they don't want to come to the service, but they still send their children to, for the teaching of the Word of God. And I, requ I request you especially to remember Lomut and pray that the work will be commenced there. Back at home, where we, we still have some churches who don't have a place of worship, uh, Kakameka, uh, Shima Latewa, Nyapore, they, they have a place of worship, and Dandana, they have, a play, they have bought a land, but they are still to construct their worship uh, structure. So I could like you to continue to pray for us for that need. We need that, and we pray that the Lord, the Lord will open ways uh, towards that. Also, this year we will be having an election in our country, Kenya a general election whereby all the county assembly, the, the county government, the president, the senators, and the members of the parliament will be elected. And we do continue. Uh, we request for your prayers towards our country as we go towards, as we approach the election. So continue to pray for that items. And remember all the workers the, there in Kenya, Remember uh, Reverend Patterson for the work that he, is in his hand, uh, uh, the administration work and the work that we are doing together. Uh, they really, him and his uh, wife, they, they really, really covered your prayers. So continue to pray for them and continue to pray for us, all of us that we are working together, the pastors. We have four pastors, me, Patrice Emmanuel and Pastor Kiaria, so continue to pray for us 
and pray for the whole aspects of the work in Kenya, the Sunday school, the youth, and other areas of the work. So continue to pray for us uh, in Kenya. We really appreciate and we really thank you all because of your prayers. We, we still say thank you a lot because of the prayers. We thank the mission board for helping us, for uh, arranging us, uh, for us to visit here Kenya. When I uh, started to visit up here Northern Ireland, and when the board arranged it that for us to come, I thought this, I asked myself, will, will I be able to attend the church in Dundalk Tree where my sister Margaret attends? And when I heard that we will attend here, one of the Sundays we will be here, where I was really happy. And I thank the Lord, I, and I thank the board because of that. So thank you all for your prayers and for the great support, the big support that we have been receive, receiving in Kenya. So we really say thanks to you. Thank you all, the brethren here in Tantra Cree, because of your support. May the Lord continue to bless you all as you think of us in Kenya and for the great support that we have been receiving. I know, we know, and we trust that your lepers will not be in vain. It will not be in vain. It will not be in vain. What you do in Kenya, many souls will be, will be saved, and at the last, Many souls will be taken to glory, and because of what you are doing and the support that you are sending back to Kenya to ensure that the gospel is proclaimed in Kenya. So, to end up, I would like to leave you with the word of God from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14, where the word of God says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. The first part of it says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of God constrains us to serve him. So may that be encouragement to you all, and not only to you, but also to us as we serve the Lord back in Kenya. And may the Lord bless you all. Thank you, Andrew, and may the Lord bless that report to all of our hearts. We're going to sing one verse and a chorus of another hymn, 514, and as we sing this, uh, the children go out to the children's church. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We'll stand just to change our position, and we'll sing the first verse and the chorus only, please. to Patrice now to come and he's going to bring us a word from the Lord. Well, I take this opportunity to thank God for the great time he has given unto us to be a part of you this time and much more for the privilege to be on this pulpit to share the word of the Lord this day. I've never imagined to stand in a place where Reverend Greer preaches. I've always been following him on, WhatsApp, on Facebook and many other preachers, and I have high respect for him and love for 
the way he preaches. Now it comes a time when you are invited to preach on his pulpit and you tremble deep within yourself, but you don't tremble when you preach the gospel. So I'll call your attention to the book of Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, on this great subject, on the Sermon on the Mountain. As you turn to Matthew chapter 5, I'd like us to consider a few things in this uh, chapter that are very, very key. And these are famous chapters, you've said, and you begin reading the Beatitudes there, and they are saying much of they, of what God wants you to do, but it comes a time when it, God or Christ himself now is addressing the disciples. And so we'll read only a few verses. We'll read verse number 14 through verse number 16 and find the blessings of the Lord from this portion of Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14 through number 16. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men hide, men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. Now, this portion of scripture begins by reminding us a wonderful thing here, telling us what we are. So, in this entire portion of scripture here, you see that the Lord Jesus Christ commenced from verse 1 and, and talking or addressing the multitudes, and then in verse, from verse number 3, he begins by saying, blessed are the poor. In verse 4, he says, blessed are they. Verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they. Verse 6, Blessed are they. He goes on and it's third person, are they. Blessed are they. But then, when he comes to verse number 11, the subject changes there and he says, blessed are ye. So blessed are they by and large. But Christ wants to address the immediate people right before him and I want you to take this very seriously as Christ addresses you through this portion of Scripture. He's not addressing they, he's addressing you who are seated here this day. And so he begins by that verse number 11, blessed are they. And then why are they blessed? He says, Men shall revile you, Christians, and persecute you, and shall say all man of evil against you. Look at very, that very qualifying word in this verse is, when they do all that, shall be falsely. So, they'll say all these things falsely for Christ's sake. What will Christians do? He says, rejoice. And after he tells them, rejoice in verse number 13, why should we rejoice? Because ye are the salt. Now, he goes on to mention the distinctive life of a disciple here. And so you must be in a in knowledge that you are living a distinct life as one who is the child of God, called of God, born of God, living for God. And he continues to say, ye are the light of the world, in verse number 14. And then verse number 15, neither do men light a candle. Men do not light a candle, and put it under a bushel, hide it. You cannot be a Christian who's living under the curtain or beside the curtain or anywhere else. You must be very open, clearly, 
distinctly living for Christ, and but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So that's why my topic will be let your light so shine. And this morning, I'm privileged to come before thee and to tell you the things, no, the things you've never heard before, the things you've been hearing, but rather to remind you that you have to let your light so shine. There are many Christians, some will call them the nominal Christians. I don't know what others will call them, but who love to be associated with, associated with Christianity and want to live for Christ, but never wanting to show forth that indeed they are. It was only in the scriptural times and the New Testament times when men were hiding, they loved Christ, and the Bible calls them the, uh, which kind of disciples? They were secret disciples. We don't need secret disciples today. So a Christian is someone who lives a life of separation from the world and the cares of this world. Because they are ever before the, the environment. You have to be separated from the cares of the world. A Christian is a light to the world. And the world here does not refer to the trees, but rather to human beings, people, unconverted, and the converted. You are the light. Your lifestyle, conversation, and relations must always reflect the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why verse 14 is very specific to tell us, ye are the light of the world. And it's Christ who's saying these things, remember. He says, I've come, I've preached the gospel, I've shown you the way of the cross, I've shown you the way to my Father, and he says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And then after telling them, he says, but now ye are the light. I'm not always going to be there. And so he's very specific. Know that some Christians are the light and some others are not. Know that pastors should be the light and Christians, not all of us, we are one. We bear the marks of Christ. And we must live a Christ-like life. We must be the kind of people to be desired, to set example to the world. We must set the standards in a society. We don't call you to be perfectionists in this life, no. We are all men and we struggle against sin every day. It's our continual fight against sin that brings about the shining effect of godliness. You don't need light when the sun is shining. But when there is darkness, you definitely need light. You can never know that you are shining in a shiny, a shiny environment. You only need to get a place where people can see clearly the vision is not right. And then light will be seen. That's why all of us could spot the sun from all ends of the earth when it's shining. And so, dear friends, with this understanding, I'd like us to consider verse number 16 and just highlight two things that are clearly seen there. Verse 16, the Bible tells us, Let your light so shine before men, not in a hiding, that they, men, that men may see, not God here, but men may see, you are good works. And when they see your good works, do they glorify or praise you? No. 
But this man may glorify your Father which art in heaven. And Christ is simply showing us we are here as the light to reflect to the world and when we reflect, Christ is seen, and men do not see us, but our light causes us to see Christ better and better, and they turn to God. And so, number one, Christian life is a witness to the world. You are a witness yourself. You are a letter to be led, to be read by all men. So you are a witness that they men may see your good works. The worth of light is visibility. It is impossible to talk about light and not to talk about vision. Our original state was not light but darkness. We were the children of disobedience who walked after the manner of the prince of this world. And so Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 8, the Bible reminds us, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Then we have a wonderful commentary parallel to this found in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 15. The Bible says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now, friends, I'll ask you, will your friends, your brothers and sisters, your children see you as light? Will your workmates look at you and see you as light amidst them? Now, the key phrase in these two verses I've read, I've read is this, in you are the light in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. So this lot of the crooked and perverse people have no fear of God. They are the children of darkness. But dear friends, our Christian life must reach out to them as a testimony of who is God. What can God do in lives of Men who are born in sin. Are they hopeless? The scriptures transforms the lives of men. In so doing, we are brought into newness of life, which we cannot help but share with others. Are you light? In this world, we are to fulfill our God's given responsibility as lights in the world in the sense that light is used to make things evident, clear, to guide, to warn, to bring cheer, and to make things safe. Have we done that as Christians? with our own lives. You don't have to light some sort of light and walk with it or bind yourself with something that is illuminating, but rather it is the work of Christ within you that is so evident, it's revealed through your life and actions, your manner of conversation, all the things come as a result of the love of Christ which constrains you, which worketh in you. 
but your life will be Christ-like life. Matthew Henry makes this statement on this verse. He says, Christians should endeavor not only to approve themselves to God, but to recommend themselves to others that they may also glorify God. They must shine as well as be sincere. That's what he makes of this phrase. As a witness. The best Christian life is practiced and not professed. By the grace of God, we must be Christians in the truest sense of the word. There must be a complete change of heart and life, faith and practice. And so I trust that each one of us will desire to shine as light in this sin-cast world. Will men see you? Will men see you are movements, your manner of conversation and desire to be more like you and then you lead them to Christ? Or should this be a private, a private affair between you and your pastor? That you are a member, you come to this fellowship and nobody else will testify about you. Your life should truly be a life that is demonstrates a Christian in the truest sense of the word. Number two, let's talk about Christian life as a presentation of God's glory. Verse 16, the last part there tells us, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When they see the light in you shining, the godliness in you, the love, the brotherly kindness in you. They say, these people of the world shall glorify your Father which art in heaven. Think of that. Think carefully. It's the Lord Jesus Christ saying, not they, no, but you have to bring about the shining effect of godliness that sinners will come in and be the saints and join hands with you and therefore glorify your Father which is in heaven, your life. Your Christian life is a presentation of the glory of God. You will sing, Christ liveth in me, Christ liveth me. Oh, what a wonderful plan that Christ liveth in me. Is it true that Christ liveth in you? I have to think carefully. Light is needed because the world is in darkness. Our entire life must aim at nothing short of the glory of God. And as we think of being a witness to the world, we ought to remember that our Christian life is a product of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? The Bible reminds us, of course, Shota Katin so reminds us the question, one was the chief end of man, and we have all memorized, including our Sunday school, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So it, God becomes the send of everything here. Your friends, we glorify God when we bear spiritual fruits. The book of John chapter 15 and verse number 8, the Bible tells us, Herein is my Father glorified, is Christ talking, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. All the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ produce fruits. They are visible 
And so he says, if you bear fruits, you shall be my disciples. If people look at your life and praise you, the glorious fruit, something must be very serious and strong. The whole purpose of your life is God. Our light shines more and more to the glory of God when we learn to be contented Christians. Now, the book of Psalm 16, verse number 5, the scriptures tell us, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord, my sure portion. David's words here speak of the contentment. He is content with what God has brought his way as his Lord. Unlike the crooked and the perverse world, in its discontentment, in its boredom, and in its restless, Christian life must be marked by these words, Thou maintainest my Lord. Will you say that in sickness? Will you say that when things don't go your way? Will you say that when your will has been surpassed by the will of the Lord, your desires have been put aside and God's will must reign? Will you truly say, Thou maintainest my Lord? Now, Thomas Watson said these words. He said, a good Christian urges, it is God that has put me in this condition. He could have raised me higher if he pleased, but that must have been, might have been as near to me. He has done it in wisdom and love. Therefore, I will sit down satisfied in my condition. Now, friends, don't wait to glorify God when things are worst in your life. Glorify God when you have the best of health. I've seen many times when people fall sick and all that, they seem to move very close to God, which is right. But we must not run to God because we have nothing else and nowhere else to go. We must run to him in sickness and in health. We must glorify God at the youngest of our age. Till we are aged, we must glorify God. No one of us is assured of your time and life here on earth. All of us, we are like vapor. Death doesn't knock on the door of the aged. It knocks even on the door of the young children. We must all be set, prepared, and when that time comes, you will be happy, Lord, to say, I have done my best for God in the world. I'm set to be received by my God. Sometimes all the things of this world, we shall leave them. And as Christians, we know that our homes are better homes. It's a mansion set by the Lord Jesus Christ prepared for us. And so we look to him that he will be glorified in our lives as he will be glorified in our death. And we will sit by him and rejoice because we did all for God. Number two, friends, we glorify God when we live our holy and separated Christian life. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9, the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth what? 
the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Do we sing our hymns with understanding? They tell us, they remind us of all these things. That's why I love our hymn. It has hymns, and even, even the previous ones that we sang were full of God's message. All Christians enjoy this special privilege of being in marvelous lights. And so you have been invited to a banquet that you do not deserve. You never deserved in the first place to be a child of God. But by his own grace, he has called you into his marvelous light. How do you say thank you, Lord? Is there anything you'll thank God with other than your own life? Now we sang a hymn in the previous conference which, with this uh, phrase here that I must not miss the well done of God. I must, don't want to miss the marvelous welcome, the well done of God. I want to hear his voice, well, well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Will he say that to you when that time comes? Will he say that to you as an individual? Will he say that to you that you gave your life for God and you have been doing all to the praise and glory to me? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You shine as light in the sin cursed world. Will he? The Lord graciously and effectually call you out of darkness into a state of marvelous light, joy, pleasure, and prosperity with this intent and view that you should show forth. By words, by actions, the qualities, praises of him who has called you. You are not on yourself. No, you belong to God as a child of God. If you consider all these things carefully, you will realize that life is worth living for Christ and nothing else. You will desire to give all and not to withhold anything if it be for God's glory. And perhaps that's why one of you, our sister Margaret, gave the best of her life to a land far away from home, by the way, where there's no comfort as you have comfort here. Was she wasting her life? She had love for souls that God will be glorified. So think carefully about this. She loved the people, the souls of men. Not, she did not love Africans, no. She loved the souls. And she went forth to shine as light that men may come in. And now we are the product, we are the fruit of that labor. She has shined. She has done her great work for the sake of God's glory. And so I conclude by saying this, that your Christian life is a witness to the world of sin. Your life is the testimony that indeed Jesus Christ saves, and you must demonstrate that as well. And that your Christian life is a presentation of God's glory. Wherever you are, remember, you are a presentation of God's glory in your life, that he saved such a wretched, wretched man like you. How we live reveal our glorious Christ in us. 
We must not live to ourselves, but to the glory of God who transforms the lives of men. But as many as received him, to them he gave power. Do you have that power? Hold so dear on to this understanding to please God in your manner of conversation. Timothy 2, 1 verse 12, the Bible reminds us, as Paul was, will say, I know whom I have believed personally. Not we know. This church will not present themselves before God and say, we know. It is I. I know whom I have believed as Christ has addressed me as the light of this world. And I am persuaded he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I, he said, you are the light of the world. Shine. Then he said, yes, I know him. I'm going to present myself to the world to tell them of the one who saved me. And I will walk with him to that very end without being ashamed. And dear friends, I'll say, let your light so shine that you may glorify your Father, which is in heaven. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you. Amen. Let's all bow in prayer. We do thank Pastor Patrice for that very timely word. And we pray that the Lord will bless it to all of our hearts. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee and praise Thee for this tremendous text of Scripture. We thank Thee for this wonderful description of the saints of God, those who are saved. Ye are the light of the world. O God, in these days, help us to shine forth for our blessed Savior in our homes, at work, in our neighborhoods, in our church, wherever we are day by day. Our prayer is, Lord, earnest prayer is that others will see Christ in us. We thank Thee, Lord, that You've saved us to shine, not only to serve, but to shine. And we pray, Lord, in these days that as we would seek to live for Thee, Lord, that we might point others to the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. O oh God, we just thank Thee for Your presence with us today. We thank Thee for our two brethren and for our sister Margaret. And we pray, Lord, that You would continue to use them in the days that lie ahead. Bless the land of Kenya. We pray, Lord, that You'll raise up other missionaries to go forth to spread the message of the gospel and raise up others in that land like Andrew and Patrice to bring the message of the gospel to their own nation. And Lord, we'd be very careful to give to thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. So separate us in thy love. Keep your hand upon us, Lord, till we meet again in thy will. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Folks, God bless you and safe home.